Hello, and welcome to Abnormal Psychology. I'm Dr. Joshua Swift. I'm a faculty member here in the Psychology Department at Idaho State University. For this week's lecture, we're going to be doing introductions to the course. We'll focus on the syllabus and going through each of the assignments and uh, schedule and readings for the course. If you have any questions at the end of this lecture or after reviewing the syllabus, uh, please feel free to contact me by email. Before we start uh, going over the syllabus and course requirements, though, I wanted to play a little game. I call this game Find the Psychologist. So uh, go ahead and take out a piece of paper or something to take notes on as you play the game. Uh, you'll be able to earn points, not real points that you can uh, will apply to your grade or anything, but uh, fun points just to see how you do. Basically, there's six rounds in the game. Uh, I'm going to show you a list of individuals, and among each list is one psychologist. You get one point if you're able to identify who the psychologist is, and then one extra point if you can identify the common occupation of the remaining individuals. You ready? Round one. Who's the psychologist among this list? And what's the occupation of the remaining individuals? Probably an easier round. Hopefully you identified Sigmund Freud as the psychologist and the remaining individuals as actors or actresses. All right, round two. Who's the psychologist? And what's the remaining occupation? This one probably a little more difficult. Bruno Bettelheim, the psychologist, and the remaining individuals are artists. Ready for round three? Okay. We have Stephen Hayes, with the remaining individuals being athletes. No. Round four. Okay, the psychologist being Lawrence Kohlberg, and the remaining individuals being politicians. Now on to round five. Got your answer? All of them are scientists, and Marsha Linehan in particular is a psychological scientist. Final round. Okay, Kay Jamison, psychologist in this list, and the remaining individuals are journalists. So add up your points so far. Possible of 12 points, two for each round. Uh, how'd you do? Now, bonus point, it, uh, what do all these individuals have in common? Go ahead, I'll give you five seconds. Think about it. What can you come up with? All of these individuals have shared or been diagnosed or it's evidence from um, historical documents, 
that they've all experienced a mental health disorder. So all experienced one or more of the disorders that we're going to cover in this class. Typically, when we think about mental health problems, oftentimes we think that it's something extreme or something strange. We often think that it's something that's very impairing in an individual's life and prevents them from really making anything of themselves or being able to accomplish much. But it's interesting that all of these individuals, the most successful athletes, politicians, actors, actresses, have all uh, experience these mental health problems. Okay, so let's go back through the list again, and you can earn more points this time. I want you to just look at the list and take a guess. Uh, some of these actors or actresses or other individuals you might know, we'll start here with the actors and actresses. Uh, what do you think? What might be the mental health problem for each of them? Go ahead and take a guess for each. For each one that you get correct, may not get very many, but each one that you do get correct, give yourself an additional point. Five more seconds, see what you can come up with. How'd you do? Interesting that a number of them have experienced some type of mood disorder, uh, depression or bipolar disorder. It's interesting to think how that might relate uh, to their success as an actor or actress. Let's go on to the second list. This was the artist. What do you think for the mental health disorders for each of these individuals. Five more seconds. right? Again, here we're seeing some depression, some bipolar disorder, some of the mood disorders, but a little bit more variety. Interesting to note that uh, a couple of them have uh, experienced schizophrenia, one of the most severe uh, disorders uh, that we know about today. How do you think that these disorders might have fueled their creativity, led to some of their most famous works. All right, let's go on to round three, the athletes. What disorders do you think these athletes experienced? your answers. We see some depression here, but I notice that we see a little bit more of the anxiety disorders within the athletes. And you think about that with their performance and uh, the anxiety that it, it might come with uh, performing in front of large crowds of people and uh, your job depending on your ability to uh, perform well. Round four, the politicians. Okay. All right. Here we notice that it's back to mainly the mood disorders again depression, bipolar disorder. 
And I wonder with these mood disorders, uh, how much of it, uh, of their experiences, perhaps influenced them and motivated, motivated them to uh, change people's lives for the better, to help others and uh, make sure that others were happy and uh, successful in the community in which they lived. The scientist. Did you get any of these right? All right, in our final round, the journalist. Which ones did you get? Okay, so I always like to start my abnormal psychology class with this game. I love it because, like I said, we often um, we think about mental health problems and we think about these psychological disorders and we often think about them in the extreme. And we often think of individuals who are uh, placed in state hospitals or individuals who maybe are at danger to themselves or others, uh, but as serious as mental health problems can be, uh, they're also very common. We'll talk about this semester about the uh, how common mental health problems are within our population. It's estimated about 25%, one in four of us will experience a mental health problem at some time in our life. And although it can be impairing, and although it can be distressful to experience these mental health problems, uh, mental health problems are not, uh, they don't necessarily have to cause major um, limitations to our life. We see by this list individuals who have gone on to uh, live very successful lives and gone on to have major impacts on our society and the world. And this despite uh, their mental health problems. And I say despite their mental health problems, but some of their um, great accomplishments may be in fact due to the mental health problems that they experience. All right, let's jump into what are we gonna actually do this semester. My goal for you this semester is to help you gain a better understanding of the way the field of psychology looks at mental health disorders the way the field looks at psychological disorders and help you be able to understand uh, the causes or the sources of these disorders and how we treat them. We're going to cover the mental health disorders specifically that are defined in the DSM-5. We'll talk about that classification system starting uh, in a couple weeks. Um, and I want you by the end of the course to be able to uh, identify what are the symptoms associated with each disorder. But in this course, I want it, you to take it a step further. Uh, the textbook is going to be able to help you identify kind of the symptoms and uh, understand a little bit, gain knowledge about the disorder. But I want you to take it a step further and really think critically and think deeply about these disorders. Figure out what they actually look like in real life and develop thoughts, understand the theories uh, behind the disorders, and try to make sense. Why would they develop for an individual? And that's gonna come a lot from the lectures and the additional assignments that I'm gonna have you do. So let's talk about each of those parts. First is the textbook. On the syllabus, 
if you have that in front of you, you'll notice that each week has a chapter or two chapters uh, that I want you to read in the textbook. This will give you some of that foundational knowledge uh, about each of the disorders that we're talking about. In addition to the reading the textbook, though, each week, or almost each week, uh, I'll post a lecture and some other videos for you to watch. The lecture and the videos uh, are really designed, like I said, to bring the material to life, to help you think deeper and more critically about it. I'm going to be covering a lot of the material that's not in the textbook. In fact, uh, there'll be hardly any overlap between my lectures and what you see in the textbook. You have to know both of them. In my lectures, um, I'm going to share uh, case examples, clients that I've worked with, or uh, clients that uh, uh, I, I have knowledge about from my research in the field. And I'm going to share my own kind of experiences based on my research and uh, kind of teachings and trainings that I do uh, for others. And we're going to do some activities just to help you kind of understand the disorders a little better. The videos that I post in addition to the lectures uh, are really designed to help give you a real world example of what it looks like they'll often be individuals who are sharing their own experiences with the mental health problems that we'll be talking about. So how you earn points from the lectures and videos. So just watch each of the lectures or videos that are posted. At some point during the lecture or video, I'll give you a code word. So the code word for this week's lecture is introduction. Now that you know the code word, of course, finish watching the rest of the lecture, but then when you're done, go on to Moodle, and for this week, uh, week's assignment, just type in that code word, and then you'll get the points. And for each lecture that you watch and type in the correct code word, you'll earn 20 points. So that's a total of 240 points over the course of the semester and 24% of your grade. second way to earn points in this course is the exams. Pers purpose of these exams is to test your knowledge of the material. What are you actually taking away in terms of knowledge? And to test whether you did read the textbooks and pay attention to the lectures and the videos. Each exam is worth 150 points, so 450 points total and 45% of your grade. These exams are all online, they're open book, open note. You can use whatever material you want, even the internet, but they are timed. And so you're going to have limited time if you haven't read the material or watched the lectures ahead of time. And you'll have difficulty answering all of the questions in the time allocated. It's also important that with each of these exams you do your own work. You can use whatever resources that you have in front of you, but do not talk to other classmates or ask roommates or family members for help on, on these exams. This is testing your knowledge. All questions on the exam will be multiple choice.
The third way for you to earn points for this course is the book report. This assignment is designed to help you gain a better understanding of what the disorders are really like, to help you dig deeper into a disorder that you might find more interesting. So on the syllabus, I have listed about 10 different popular books that cover abnormal psychology issues. Over the course of the semester, you need to read one of those books. Now, if you have a different book in mind that also covers a particular disorder, and you would like to read that instead, I'm fine with that, as long as you get it approved by me first. This assignment is worth 160 points total. You get 120 points of those points by just reading the book. At the top of your paper, you will need to include a statement saying how much of the book you read. So for example, I read 100% of the book, or I read 50% of the book. And that will determine the percent of those 120 points that you receive. The remaining 40 points will come from the report that you write. This is a three-page, double-spaced report. It needs to be exactly three pages, and you get 10 points if you follow that direction. The first page is worth another 10 points, and in it, I want you to provide a, pr a brief summary of the book. The second page can also earn 10 points, and in it, I want you to write about three main lessons you learned from the book. The final page is also worth 10 points, and in it, I want you to describe three things you are going to do differently in your life or career now that you have read the book. You will also be able to earn points in this class through the course activities. I have six different activities that you will need to do using the Moodle forum function throughout the course of the semester. The purpose of these activities is to help you think deeper about the topics and give you some more hands-on experience with them. Each activity is worth 30 points, and in total, they are worth 18% of your final grade. So for each one, you log into Moodle and go to the corresponding forum. In that forum, you create an initial post. This needs to be done by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. in the week they are assigned. Then, by Saturday in that week, you need to reply to the post of others. So for example, the first week includes an introduction activity. For this activity, you need to first write a short introduction paragraph about yourself and post it to the forum. Then, by the end of the week, read through the post of others in the class and find someone who has something in common with you and reply to their post sharing the common thing. Remember, be polite and respectful in all course communication. And, since these activities are interactive, none of these can be completed late. If you don't complete the initial post by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m., or the reply post by Saturday at 11.59 p.m., you don't get points for the activity. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the whole course. That's the requirements and the, kind of the outline of it. You'll have more details on the syllabus, of course, so go ahead and look at that. If you do have any questions, uh, my contact information is listed on the syllabus, so you can uh, reach me that way. Now that we've covered the course, I want you to take a, a couple minutes before you finish this lecture, and I want you to write down two things. Think about it and write down. What do you hope to achieve in this course? You likely have some reason for taking the course. Uh, perhaps it's a requirement for your major, uh, or perhaps it's something that you just find interesting. Whatever your reason is, you probably have some connection to the material. Like I mentioned, uh, one in four people in the United States suffer from a diagnosable mental health problem. 
And so it's likely that you yourself or you know somebody personally who has experienced a mental health disorder. And this course might be able to help you gain understanding and insight into that. But that depends on the effort that you put into it. So take a minute and think, what do you hope to achieve in this course? What's your goal for attending it? And then as you have that in mind, I want you to write down, and please do write this down so it's more concrete, it's there in front of you. What do you need to do in order to achieve that? It's always great at the start of the semester to set the goals that you'd like to achieve. You're uh, excited about the material, excited about the course, and I know that excitement kind of wanes as the semester goes on. So set these goals now. What are you going to achieve to make, what are you going to do to make the most out of this course this semester? And when you have that written down, that's the end of this first lecture. Uh, so we'll, uh, I'll post a recording for next week and we'll start talking about psychopathology and what we think about uh, what is a mental health disorder. Thanks for listening and I'll uh, see you again next week.